Okay, so I'm hoping this is going to be a really quick video, but it's mainly, I'm just going to go over the process of what I'm going to be doing to refresh or update the firmware on my mom's ILX W650 head unit, the Alpine one in her car. Now we've been having this issue where Android Auto constantly crashes or doesn't connect at all. The head unit itself is super laggy and there are just general issues that are extremely infuriating that I don't have with the Pioneer head unit which also has Android Auto and Apple CarPlay in my dad's car. Now, uh, from what I read online in some of the forums, there is a solution which is updating the firmware of the head unit to whatever this is. I know the one that's on the radio right now is something like 0.8. This one is our V1. Dot 014, this is the current one I believe. The one on there is like a V1.08. So I'm hoping this will fix the issue. Uh, slightly unnerved that the issue with the car play isn't listed in here, but let's hope it works. Uh, again, just to reiterate something, I am not going to be a replacement for this manual. If you are going to be doing this, go to Alpine's website. Follow their instructions and do as they say. If something goes wrong with your radio, I'm not responsible for it, but follow the instructions. So step one, do not turn off vehicle's ignition or head unit power signal while updating. Some modern vehicles may shut down the ignition if the engine is not running for some time. If you are not sure if this applies to you, your car or to your car, Leave the engine running while the update is in progress. My mom's Ford Escape Hybrid does do this. Uh, I think most Fords do. They shut off accessory power five minutes after the engine turns off or when you open the door. So I will be keeping the engine running. Do not press any buttons while updating. Do not update while driving. Failing to follow any of these cautions could damage your head unit. So that's kind of scary. Now, only flash drives format the FAT32 can be read by your head unit. This means that your flash drive cannot be formatted to anything else including NTFS or XFAT. So let's pop this flash drive in there and format the FAT32. Okay so when it comes to formatting this drive it's pretty simple. So right click here then go to format and it wants in FAT32. I'm going to double check to make sure that's right. Yep, FAT32. Okay, and where's my thingy? So, start format. And I've already created another folder with everything that was on that drive. So I just click OK. Should take a few minutes. Or a minute. Some. Oh, that was quick and easy. Okay, so now that that's done, we go back here. You can see the drive is completely empty with nothing else on it. And back to that bit. There's step one. Now, extract the downloaded files using a program like WinZip onto your computer. If you don't have a program that handles zip files on your computer, you will need to install one. Okay, that I do have. And that's the software manual. Okay, let's download the actual software itself. That's not it. That's not it either. That's not it. And and here's the software. I'm going to leave a link in the description below about where to find it. Okay, we'll do that one day, I promise. Extract 2. So once extracted, you will see a folder named LIXW650. Copy the unzip folder onto your flash drive. And copy and pasting or dragging and dropping the file. Picture below. The picture below shows the folder IWX on a flash drive and folders. Note, you cannot change the file names of the folder names. The head unit will not recognize the files. Do not just copy the files to the drive. You need to copy the folder. Okay, so let's do that real quick. There's the folder right there. No, do not store any other files on the flash drive. If there's anything on this drive besides the update folder, not correctly read certain manufacturer's USBs, memory sticks may not work. If so, try a different manufacturer's USB. Okay, so plug the flash drive into the connector on the head unit. Uh, the extension is typically ran from the back of your head unit, either to your glove box or center console areas. 
the vehicle depending on your original install. I ran it to the center console. So while your vehicle's ignition is powered on, do not turn off the ignition while the head unit is not updating. Go to menus, firmware update, you will need to put the parking brake on, engage the parking brake, and the second, wait, wait, release the parking brake and engage it a second time. Push FW upgrade. This process should take about one minute. The head unit will reboot and is finished. Check the version, then do a factory reset of the system. Okay, that shouldn't be too hard. Okay, so I'm in my mom's car right here, and pay no mind to this, it was my very first radio install. And then I pulled that radio out and popped this radio in, so I either way, I got a new trim bezel. I'm going to install it when I get around to it. So, step one. Yes, I did pull everything apart to try and figure this out. Pull out the USB right there, and then stick in this flash drive into the USB port. The reason this whole car is apart is because I just redid everything. Oh. Okay, so the flash drive is in. I'm going to start the car. Now, instructions say to go from here. Instructions say to go to the menu, go to setup, depress the parking brake, pull it up a second time. There's that. Go to systems, now go to information, then go to firmware upgrade, then go to update, and it says, oh. Okay, so there it is. It says to make sure not to touch anything while it's doing this. I'm going to keep this in real time so you guys can actually see what's going on. I don't know why, but I'm super nervous right now. I'm resisting the urge to touch anything, including the parking brake, ignition key. I don't know why, but I suddenly have that urge. Okay, and the radio is rebooting. Okay, there it is. Okay, so now that it's done, you have to go back to, oh, pull that back down, back up, go to setup, then go to information, and double check the firmware number, and that is the correct one, and then you have to do a factory reset. So I'm going to go to system, reset, so you want to, yes, and hopefully that should complete the process. Now I'm going to check to see if the uh, CarPlay actually works, or the Android Auto actually works. If that's not the case, then I'm going to pull the head unit out and zip tie, then zip tie the USB cable to the 16 pin power adapter because apparently that's also an issue. Let's see. So software update didn't really fix the lagging issue, it's still super unresponsive and slow to load especially compared to the Pioneer head unit. I'm actually going to pull the radio out of it and see if the USB cable is loose because apparently that's the thing that happens on this head unit. There's an actual service bulletin or whatever it's called on the uh, Alpine website and this is totally frozen now. This is after this. Uh, it's not even fucking Yep, nope, nothing. This is after the software update, too. Oh, there it is. And out. It's loading very slowly. Straight lag. Completely unresponsive. Let's pop the trim panel off. And it closes again. It just, it's so hit and miss. So this is post software update, it's still super laggy, 
and I am going to uh, pretty much try my best to zip tie this to the 16 pin connector right there which is what Alpine says to do I don't know how this would be loose considering it feels quite solid but it's definitely something that is said on the website to do so let's do that just like that that's the plan that's exactly how they had it in the photo okay so just to let you know this did not work I am currently trying something else and I'll upload another video if I finally figured out what is wrong with this head unit anyway if you like this video hit like if you want to see more videos like this hit subscribe and do whatever else you do on the internet